Hi, it's Tommy. Before we get started, I just want to let you know this episode is brought to you by Pod Hero, the easiest way to support your favorite podcast. Did you know that only 1% of the biggest podcasts make money? It's true. The other 99%, wink, wink, like this one, rely on support from listeners like you. With Pod Hero, you can support all of your favorite podcasts with one monthly membership fee of only $4.99. Just click on the link in the show notes. Tell Pod Hero your favorite podcast. Please don't forget this one, Blending the Family. And your contribution gets shared between shows at the end of the month. I want to say I am enjoying being part of Pod Hero's network. Pod Hero works with almost all podcasts. There's a 0% platform fee they don't take a cut there are no contracts and guess what you can try it for free for 30 days pod hero tell them blending the family sent you welcome to another edition of the podcast known as blending the family welcome to episode 164 i am your host tommy maloney bad news i still have the chair still haven't a new chair. I really need a new chair. You know what? Why doesn't somebody sponsor this wonderful, fantastic, educational podcast? Somebody send me a freaking chair. How's that? Just send me a chair. How are you doing? You doing good? I'm, I am like full of energy right now and it's, I don't know what time it is. It's almost five o'clock. Oh, it's 4.11. 4.11. All right. On this episode of the podcast, did I mention 164? Sonia Kuralt, she is the founder of Divorcify, and I will tell you more about Sonia in a little bit. You doing good? Are you you locked down still? Are you hunkered down? State of Colorado, we had one of those uh, alerts on all of our phones, like an Amber Alert. State of Colorado, mandatory, mandatory. You have to wear a mask. Now, I have no problem wearing a mask. No problem, okay? I am going to tell you, though, I'm going to be 100% honest with you right now. I'm going to move this microphone as I'm doing this. I'm not wearing a mask right now, okay? So please be careful. Uh, You might want to be six feet away from your speaker right now. So I'm going to warn you, I am not wearing a mask right now. You good? All right. I am having a a fantastic day, and I want to share that with you because my day started off, I had a, uh, from the dreaded day job, I had a a meeting, thinking it was going to last two hours, it lasted 45 minutes. From there, from there, I had an interview, upcoming podcast, where are my notes, there are my notes, upcoming podcast interview with uh, Ben Heldfond. I probably screw that up. Heldfond. Yeah, Heldfond. And uh, Nikki DiBartolo. And if that last name sounds familiar, think of the 49ers. Anyway, they wrote a wonderful book, wonderful book called Our Happy Divorce. And they will be uh, on an upcoming podcast episode. Hint, hint, maybe, maybe... Uh, maybe episode 165. I'm just saying. Had a blast with them. Uh, check them out. Check out uh, Our Happy Divorce. Right? Is that what I said? Yeah, Our Happy Divorce. It really opened up my eyes, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give a lot away. But I feel I have been a very crappy ex-husband, and to my former spouse Mary. Mary, I apologize. If you're listening to this episode, I apologize. I know I was a crappy, and I'm still probably a crappy ex-husband, but I am uh, wanting to change. I am wanting to change. And so I I just want to put out there, I'm I'm sorry. I am truly, truly sorry. And so, so we talked about the chair. I need a new chair. Send me a chair, please. A really nice one. Wouldn't it be great if somebody actually did? As I'm looking across the the desk here, uh, my wife and I 
share this 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 massive desk, and it's still uh, not enough room for the two of us. I take up a lot of room on this desk with two laptops going on, the microphone, notes, books. Uh, I want to talk about books. Let's talk about books. Yeah, let's talk about books. I want to start recommending books on every podcast episode, and I'm going to leave you with two of them. The first one is by Bob Berg, Bob Berg, B-U-R-G, called Endless Referrals. Network your everyday contacts into sales. Uh, it's a, so far, pretty good book. I've heard of Bob Berg, but here's the funny thing. Where, where did I get this book? I, I don't know. Where has this book been? Even a better question. So recently, my wife Anna and I uh, pulled the trigger and bought a new bed. And my back still hates, uh, the, hates or hated the old bed and now hates the new bed. But anyway, it's one of those beds where the head, uh, head area will raise up and we, we splurge a little and spend a little extra money. And so the feet part raise up. Well, the old bed, um, when I first bought it, when the guys came into, in my uh, old town home, when they came in to install the bed, for some reason, the one side of the bed, the uh, board, uh, uh, the, the, the piece that connects the headboard to the footboard, it, it didn't line up right, so they tried to jerry-rig it, and uh, it didn't work too well. So one day, we noticed in our bedroom that one of the light bulbs was out. So Anne uh, got up on the bed, changed the light bulb, and then became a kid, became a, a three-year-old kid, going to a hotel for her first time and jumping on the bed. And she did that. She jumped up and then landed on her butt. And when she did that, because the bed wasn't stable to begin with, uh, the corner just collapsed. So the bed was being held up for, for years for years uh, with magazines and books. So the night before we were getting the new bed, we took the bed, the old bed apart, and I started uh, going through the magazines because Otis, if you are a first-time listener to this podcast, thank you for coming by. Uh, We have a puppy named Otis, and Otis, because he's a puppy teething, he's been chewing on magazines and books. So I'm like, all right, which ones do we need to throw away? But for some reason, Otis didn't chew on endless referrals. <laughs> this book has been holding up our bed. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe this is a time to uh, start reading it. So I am reading it. Endless Referrals, uh, Bob Berg. If you're, um, not necessarily if you're in doing sales, but even with uh, looking for a, a new job opportunity, this book will really help you with uh, the networking process. Now, yes, uh, some of it is outdated because uh, Bob Berg talks about going to chamber uh, events and networking events in person. And so obviously we're not doing that. Uh, But you can still probably find uh, virtual networking events. Um, I guess go on on, uh, meetup.com. There's a free plug for meetup.com and see if anybody's doing uh, viral events. So, again, endless referrals, network your everyday contacts into sales, Bob Berg. All right, the other one. I um, uh, One of our past guests, uh, Glenn Brooks Jr., uh, put together a group coaching um, cohort. I, I This is this word, cohort. The way it's used, the, the, the context is new to me, but it essentially means like a meeting of the minds. This is a, um, what do you call it? Like, like having your own board of directors. You know, it's a mastermind group. Anyway, so Glenn Brooks Jr. Put, has this, this group, and part of the uh, three-month program is to read the book, The One Thing, uh, by Gary Keller, and Gary Keller is part of uh, Keller Williams, the uh, real estate conglomerate. I don't know what the word would be, but the one thing 
by Gary Keller is another book I, I recommend. I do recommend a uh, book I'm reading. Now, I had a conversation the other day with my dad. My dad was talking about some of the guests have been on the podcast, and he was like, you get some really amazing guests. So this is me talking to dad right now. Okay, dad, I love you. I know you really want me to read more fiction. I'm struggling with the Hemingway book. I am just struggling. I will keep at it, though. I promise. But I love nonfiction. I love nonfiction. Anyway, uh, so that's it. That's that's about it for that. Let me grab Sonia's info because Sonia Kuralt is our guest on this episode of Blending the Family, the podcast. Grabbing my paper, doing the shuffling thing. Sonia Kuralt, founder of Divorceify. Uh, Sonia, as a divorce and family law litigator, Sonia witnessed the confusion, the inflexibility, and the inefficiency inherent to the adversal divorce process. The archaic one-size-fits-all system often made it unnecessarily difficult to achieve her client's goals. She saw the value of using technology to simplify, streamline the process, thus saving her clients time, money, and more importantly, stress. Having experienced her own divorce, Sonia truly appreciates the importance of building a reliable and trustworthy support team. I am so amazed where technology has come into play for the world of divorce. It is, if you're a regular listener to this podcast, we've had some fantastic, uh, really smart people using technology to help with the divorce process, the uh, ability to timestamp when you're uh, bringing your kids back to their uh, parents, the other parents' house. Well, Divorceify takes what you would need for a divorce. Besides the attorney, there are other things that Sonia will, will mention that Divorceify can help you uh, with my one of my recommendations, and I'm not kidding when I say this. Dog walkers. Dog walker. Seriously. Matter of fact, speaking of dog walkers, my uh, my one daughter uh, Becca has been uh, nannying uh, a family because the mom is working from home and she has kids. Well. She's working, and, you know, it's summertime. You can't just entertain the kids. You need somebody to help. I thought that was a brilliant idea. So if you have teenagers, find parents that are working from home that have kids and nanny for them. There's a business right there. You just got a free business. You're probably going to make millions of dollars. Millions of dollars because who knows when... COVID-19 is going to end. Who knows when we're going to get a vaccine. You know what? Have somebody, I know it's going to sound odd, but have somebody come in and be your nanny. You know, teenagers are looking for summer jobs. They need summer jobs. I mean, it's it's not like they can uh, all go to, you know, the local fast food place. A lot of places aren't uh, hiring uh, teenagers right now. So there you go. How can you find uh, Sonia Kuralt? Well, her website is divorceify.com. Uh, you can also uh, find her her blog, LinkedIn. Uh, her calendar will all be in the show notes. All right. What do we talk about with Sonia? We talk about we talk about the divorce rate and our thoughts and feelings with coronavirus. Where is it going to go? Mediation versus litigation. When should you mediate? When should you litigate? And why you need to set the right help during a divorce. Why you need the right help. Why you need to get help uh, for divorce. And so we talk about that. There you go. Episode 164, Sonia Kuralt. 
please support her. You know, again, show notes will have her website, divorceify.com. But uh, there you go. There you go. So excited Whew. to bring you this episode. I'm so excited to bring you any episode. If you or your organization would like some coaching help, check out the website. The website has been actually upgraded. Oh, hold on. Phone's ringing. Let's see who's calling. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska. I'm guessing, I am guessing if it's coming from Omaha, Nebraska, Omaha Steaks. I'm, I'm going to guess it's Omaha Steaks. So there's another sponsorship. All right. Uh, please check out the website for uh, the coaching information. Also for if you need a, I can do virtual speaking. There you go. That's it. That's it. If this is your first time listening, again, thank you for coming by. Uh, for those of you who are a regular listener, as we always say, as Terry Crews would say, as Terry Crews, the man, the myth, the legend would say, your success is my success. Sonia Kralt, episode 164. Have a great day. Stay safe. And if you're in the state of Colorado, you better be wearing a mask. Uh, because that's why it was driving me crazy last Friday. I really think just the traffic was so insane with Zoom. I agree. I agree. Because uh, Saturday morning, I had uh, my Toastmasters meeting on Zoom. Mm -hmm. No yeah. problem. Uh, I know you were saying that you had no problem. So exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad this is working. Me too. Wonderful. Uh, How are you doing? Good. Did you have a nice weekend? We had a really good weekend. Uh, how about you? Yeah, it was good. It's actually my son is turning one next weekend. Oh, Mazel tov. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we were just, uh, you know, we're not doing anything just with my parents and just like close family, but um, we're, uh, you know, just setting things up so that during the week when I don't have childcare, I can actually get some work done this week. <laughs> That's fine Most because... My my one daughter, she is nannying uh, for a lady because she's now working from home and she needs help watching the kids. I'm like, that's brilliant. That yeah. is brilliant. I need somebody to come by and, and do that for me from our, our puppy. If right. they can come by and you know let let them get chewed on by the puppy and take them for walks. Right. I know. I know. I hear you. So life is good? Yeah, it's not um, It's not bad. It's been uh, super busy, diversify um, with, between uh, professional applications. We're just getting uh, members. A lot of our professionals already in the network are, ma are referring many of their colleagues. So it's just one of those things where it's fantastic. We're getting several roadmaps a day all through the month of May, all of this June already. I can't believe it's June 15th. Um, and uh, so it's just been busy. It's If I win the lottery tomorrow, I'll have a big uh, team. But right now, it's just the three of us trying to do what we can. Sonia, you don't want to win the lottery because every time somebody wins the lottery, they end up, end up becoming even more broke. <laughs> I, <laughs> so. I know. <laughs> and you know, I know, and you know that show, I'm not into these shows, but sometimes I am. It was like the show about like the misfortune and the people that come out of the woodwork. After yeah. On, it's re it's just, we live in, our society is just so crazy. It is. But with Divorcify, you're trying to make the less craziness. And right. one thing I'm hearing you say is, which uh, it makes me a little nervous is that because a lot of so-called experts were talking about with this pandemic that you're going to see one of two things, either a lot of babies coming out of this or a lot of divorces. And mm -hmm. it, it sounds like because of Divorcify, because of what your, your traffic right now, it sounds like that possibly people are, are, are right that, they're seeing or will be seeing more divorces. Yeah. You know, I think it's, um, so my opinion on that is twofold, Tommy. I think 
I don't know about the divorces, honestly, just because of the financial climate right now. That okay. is like one of the main reasons that people stay in an unhappy marriage. And I think that there's still so much going on with people's losing jobs, just so much uncertainty that I don't know if the divorce rate's going to go up. But what I do know for sure that Diversify is signaling, there are people looking for information the right information to talk to the to talk to people i think to start to figure out is this a divorce is it just challenging that our marriage has challenges because of the challenges we're all facing given the circumstances going on so i think that it's the financial part is what makes me hesitant to to completely agree with that position just because i think the financial aspect of it what's going on in the economy is so heavy that that's not going to go away in a few months. So I don't know that people are necessarily going to leave partnerships right now if one of them is in a much weaker financial position than usual. Where, and I haven't looked in a while, maybe yeah. you, can, you can help me with this, but do you know what the divorce rate for first time marriages is at right now? I believe when we looked at this a few months ago, Tommy, it was a little bit below 50%. It was in like 43, 44. Okay. Yeah. That's what, that's what I, the last time I looked, that was about it as well. Um, because it's one of those, it's always one of those numbers that is mythical. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a uh, first time marriage is, you know, 50%. Well, you know, that's, that's actually part of life. You know, you have a, 50 50 chance of doing X anyway. Right. So um, let's talk about Divorcify as far as did, did you, Sonia, ever think that you would become a concierge? Um, no, <laughs> I didn't. But um, I think I didn't. But when I first launched uh, Divorcify in the middle of sort of my own personal turmoil and everything and being so disillusioned with the litigation process and frustrated with it, um, I realized very early on that people needed me in other capacities besides sort of providing them with uh, legal advice. And that's where the concierge uh, piece came in, where sometimes some people just need orientation. Some people need extra handholding. Some people need somebody to remind them and help them gather the documents. All of the overwhelming steps that somebody needs to take in order to get divorced, people needed help with that. And so that's where the concierge piece came in because really everybody's pain points are different. Everybody's going to need different support in other ways than just legal help and the professional help um, needed. So that's where the concierge piece came in. And then it also came in just because of us, of me really being, being in tune with the fact that it does take a, team of professionals and just finding the right professionals or knowing where to start with that can be so overwhelming. Why not have somebody help you with that and do it for you? So what type of professionals are in the network to help your customers out? Sure. So basically all types of professionals that touch on the divorce process. So the obvious ones, uh, attorneys, mediators, we do have some non-attorney mediators. Um, we have th all types of mental health professionals from couples counseling to just uh, individual counseling, uh, parenting experts. We have business valuators. We have... Um, forensic uh, accountants, CPAs, CDFAs. Um, we also just actually got a, an appra appraisers for um, homes, but also a vintage car appraiser whose business is actually very much booming right now wow. in divorce, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so really all, uh, real estate professionals from, uh, mortgage brokers. Um, so really anybody who touches the divorce process at some point is going to, in the majority of divorces have to be engaged with that person going through the divorce. So 
we really, our team really consists of what we're trying to build and continue to build is really a team of professionals for every aspect of a divorce. So let's take a step back, Sonia. Where where did Divorceify grow from? Where where was this pain point on why you felt a need for this? Sure. So I was, I consider myself a recovering divorce litigator. So I am a divorce <laughs> attorney, but uh, for many years I was litigating in Boston, Massachusetts. And at that time, um, it became very clear to me that there were certain uh, pain points that every client was having on a consistent basis when they were coming in for a consult with me. So the three main issues that I saw were the following. Um, Number one, clients would come to me and think that as their divorce attorney, I was also their financial advisor their real real estate um, professional, their therapist, their everything. Um, so there was this lack of understanding that they actually needed a team of professionals to deal with each facet of their divorce. And the argument was that if you actually use each professional for what their expertise is, you are in fact saving yourself time money and stress and getting the best possible advice from that professional. So that was the first. The second issue was that I had clients who would come in for a consult and they had clearly been misinformed right from the beginning, which can be very, these are costly mistakes of what type of process they needed to go through in order to get divorced. So for example, I had clients who had been in the litigation process and they were either unhappy with their attorneys, um, well, usually if they were there to see me, and they could have mediated. They, other clients were mediating when they should have litigated some issues and really they were just starting the process on the wrong foot. So they were not, they didn't have the right information to make a well-informed decision from the beginning. And these are costly mistakes that can't always be undone. Can you, so that was a certain Son, issue. Sonia, sorry to interrupt, but can you give us an example of, you know, when it should have been mediated versus litigated or vice versa? Sure. So that really comes down to, Tommy, the um, level of conflict in between uh, spouses as well as the level of trust. When you go into a mediation, for example, there has to be some sort of communication. There has to be a, a a trust between the two spouses that they're going to be forthcoming not only about their financial disclosures but that there aren't that there's no mistrust between them because if there is you can't possibly sit down at a table believe that the other person has been forthcoming about all of their information in order to negotiate so that's an issue so if it's a high conflict case mediation at times can be uh, can address certain issues, but then other issues may have to be litigated. So that is really an understanding of in that first consultation with the client, you have to understand what is the conflict level in this relationship? Where do these spouses stand amongst each other? What is the level of communication between them? So that's a, a perfect example of people starting down Uh, starting down the wrong path. Then on the other hand, there were the clients that would say, well, I, my best friend got divorced. Uh, He or she also had children and they immediately went to court. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, wow, they start talking to you. They're able to communicate with their spouse about issues with the children. They've been able to come to agreements about what the parenting time is going to look like, about how they're splitting expenses, what they're doing with the marital home. So you're looking at this and saying, you guys have already done the hard work. There is no need for you to be in the court process right now until the very end when it comes to signing your divorce decree. That's the only time. So people were, uh, people are making decisions on what the best process is for them on the with the wrong information, and that's problematic. And you, in that situation, when you're hearing um, 
things more on the positive side that they are open to communication and things like that. But there may be one of them saying, well, I, I feel that we should go to litigation. Can you, with a clear conscience, say no? Can you say to them, I, I feel that the better situation is here in mediation versus having to go to court, having to spend costly amounts of money. Can you have that open dialogue or is it you have, you still have to honor what unfortunately or fortunately what the client wants. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It does. So I think that, um, that obviously comes down to each professional and who you are. So I can only speak for myself, but, Mm -hmm. and for the types of professionals that we have in our network. Um, so for me personally, at the end of the day, you do what your client wants. That is your job as an attorney. However, as a human being and as an attorney, you give your client all of the information, the pros and cons to litigation. What does that mean? Because they don't know. They're not attorneys and that's okay. They're not supposed to know, but that's your job to educate, to provide them with all of the information, what each process means, what it will entail, and how they work. And based on that information, if then my client looked at me and said, you know what, Sonia, I want to go forward with litigation. Okay. There's at that time. Okay. But you've been warned. I've told you what this is. I've provided you good, accurate information on what this may look like. So we're going to do it. But I don't necessarily think that this is the best approach and this is why. And once I've given my opinion, then with a clear conscience and all the information, then yeah, I can move forward with that. But I have to be honest, in many situations, that happens quite often where a client comes to you and they have already in their minds decided how this is going to go, what they're going to do. But if you sit down, you have an open dialogue with them, person to person, not sort of attorney to client, but just as human beings on that level, I did not have many clients who would look at me and say, well, you know what? I'm still moving forward with what I think is right. They would listen. They would hear. They would under- take time to understand. And that's okay. But at the end of the day, they that built a different rapport and trust between me and the client that at the end of the day, nobody really loves their divorce attorneys, but they would very much respect that I really wanted what was best for them and their family. When you are vetting these professionals for Divorceify, is that part of the conversation you have with them, Sonia? Is that the human aspect, as you said? Yes, um, it's really important to me, uh, Tommy. I've been through a divorce myself, and at the end of the day, we are all human. We have families. Divorce is a huge life transition, even if it's amicable. It is the end of a chapter and the beginning of a new one. It is hard. And when there's children involved, especially, it is a especially a, in my opinion, a sensitive situation where you really want to promote a, you you don't want to promote an adversarial context between parents because even at the end of their divorce, their co-parenting relationship is ongoing forever. Correct. (laughs) Correct. Forever. So it is. These are our important conversations for me uh, to have and that I have with every single professional who is in our network. We have over 200 professionals and every single one, because if you are a professional that is approaching divorce as sort of the stereotypical pit bull attorney, win or lose, we're going after them, that, that may work for their practice. That's fantastic. But that is not what our mission at Divorceify is. And those are not the types of professionals that we want on this platform. Um, Inherently, in a divorce, everybody loses. But it's not a win or lose game. Divorce is really about how do we get people through this process 
without it being devastating on all levels and helping them achieve a healthier chapter two. One that they never could have imagined was possible, but it can be. That's what it's about. You know, I was, I'm sorry, I was just zoning thinking about, you know, what you were saying about the process. And I remember going through my divorce and I really wish I'd listened to other people as far as, you know, having the ability to have legal advice. And my mind, honestly, Sonia, was she wanted the divorce. I just want this to be all over with. And I'll never forget when I got the paperwork, I didn't think. I was just still in shock that this was all happening. And I signed the paperwork and I'm like, what did I just do? But it wasn't that immediate moment. It was you know, still going through the grieving process of, exactly. holy crap, I'm getting divorced. I'm, I don't know what to do. And, you know, at the time, you know, I, the the job I had I was on I was on the road I had no home other than hotels and that's what I did I just used my hotel points and just stayed at hotels and but I I really believe that there's been such a change in the world when it comes to what Divorceify is doing to help alleviate the the whoopsies so. At, you know, yeah. you're, 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 you're starting from the beginning saying, all right, here's, here's where we're at versus, you know, not taking the time, not, you know, again, in my situation, I didn't seek any legal counsel and I paid the price. I'm still yeah. paying the price because of it. Yeah. And so it, it really helps to have a, a, a trusted source. Right. Because you right. need that. Exactly. Exactly, Tommy. I, I absolutely agree. And it's stories like yours that, that fuel the fire in me to continue to really just build a trusted brand of professionals and resources so that people don't make these type of mistakes and pay for an extended period of time because they can't be undone. And it's, I think, our duty as professionals to set people up for success right from the beginning. And I think that's part of it. And what you said is so powerful. The, the grieving process, you were in shock. All you're thinking is like, holy, I'm getting divorced. Like it takes people time to, to let that sink in, to internalize and realize, wow, this is a new reality that I have to deal with. And we have to let people, I believe in letting everyone take their time. Every journey is your own when you go through this. There is no right way to go through a divorce, but there is a better way if you you know right from the beginning that you have a source that, that you can reach to for professional for professional help as, as well as resources that are reliable and ac with accurate information. That's another big issue. Um, but I think that that's just it. I've heard from too many people your story. And for me, that is, that is my mission. If I can get all of these people right in the beginning and just touch them with, you have a place that you can find the right type of help whenever you're ready and the right information, then I've done my job. It's all I, I want to do. It's a big education and I think talking to people, relating to them, listening to them. What are the, your clients really saying to you at times? And every person's going to be different. And being able to customize the process to them. And th that's what's really important to me. One of the questions I'm, I'm trying to formulate in my head is that how do you create this trustworthiness and the 
the point here is, you know, when you go through a divorce and you're, you're seeking counsel, knowing who to trust, yes, you have a lot of word of mouth, but ha how have you with Divorceify been able to let your clients know that you, you have their best interest? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with, um, with the types of professionals that we have, um, sort of the caliber of professionals, the content that we're putting out there. Um, we are constantly putting out content that is educational, that is not adversarial. We're not scared to have conversations. That's not, that's not what I mean by not adversarial but we're not putting out content that gives people false hope um, or that gives people um, unrealistic expectations. We, what we do is we provide them with information that is relatable. Information that if you've gone through a divorce, this or are going through or feelings, this makes sense. We're not just providing legal information. We're also pro providing content that that is in regards to emotional health and, and mental health and self-care. And this is what tips on, this is what you need to look for in an attorney. These are the types of questions so re that you ask an attorney when you have a consultation with them. So all of this information comes across as, I think, and it's it's why I think that we have so many roadmaps coming through um, and people looking for it. We're providing this information that says, here we are touching on all aspects, giving you tips, giving you information on how best to start this process, things to think about. And the, re the reality is too that whenever I go on other podcasts or I've been interviewed quite a few times, this is what you will, con my message is consistent. My message stays consistent and people trust consistency. Um, and I think that all of those things coupled together is why we have built that brand amongst our professional community and with clients. So walk us through the process, Sonia. So I am somebody that's, possibly thinking about going through a divorce or um, is going to do it? What's, what's the process once they get onto uh, the Divorceify site? Sure. So um, the first thing that they will do is they will create um, an account. All of this is free, by the way. Um, and so they create an account and that literally creates almost like a dashboard for that client. So they are able to house as many roadmaps as they go through. They are able to put in um, the important documents that they have collected in their checklist. So that's sort of their home base. At that time, they will go through a series of questions. The intake, for lack of a better word, takes about seven minutes or so. And with those questions, as a client is responding to those questions, the, the platform is powered by technology. So the tech, the tech at the end, our divorce GPS, provides a client with a customized div divorce roadmap based on their responses to the questions. So no two clients are going to get the same roadmap because everybody is different and everyone's going to respond to these questions differently. So when the client is finished and they get their roadmap, their roadmap contains three things. Number one, it contains a recommendation of what the best process for this particular client is in order to get divorced based on the responses to the questions. So it not only makes that recommendation, but then it also starts, what I was just talking about earlier, the education piece. It talks about the other ways they could get divorced and the pros and cons to each process. Second, the roadmap then provides them with recommendations of professionals from our vetted network. And that is to alert the client to, okay, 
we have issues spotted, some issues in your divorce that are going to require you at some point to think about engaging these type of professionals to deal with these issues. So we recommend the professionals. And then we also talk about the different roles that each professional plays and what it means. Because some people, they don't know what a, what a divorce coach does. And if you don't know what somebody's role is or how they can help you, how can you even think about hiring them as part of your team? <laughs> you just can't. So we, we continue with the education piece. The third piece is um, that the roadmap provides. And the last piece is a homework list. Um, and that is mm. just a list of the important documents that the client can start to collect. No matter what process they use to get divorced, financial disclosures and certain documents are always gonna be required as part of the negotiation. So start to collect those. Start to familiarize yourself with the bank statements, with uh, all types of retirement statements, the mortgage deeds, et cetera. So the client can in their, when they're finally ready to meet with their professional on that first meeting, they can feel prepared. They can feel prepared. They have the documents. And that's going to help the professional be able to better assist them and provide them with advice because now they also have the documents and can really get the full picture of what's going on in this client's particular client situation. Does the divorce GPS also recognize the state the client is coming from? Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that state by state laws are different, correct? Correct. correct. Um, so it does. It does recognize where the state where the client is coming from. The, um, because we... Exactly. Every state has different laws. And uh, myself and my other two co-founders are only licensed to practice in certain states. The divorce roadmap is not providing any type of legal advice. However, it is providing legal information that is on a national basis. Um, mediation, litigation, collaborative tend to all sort of work the same no matter what state you're in. The nuances of that state and how to go forward with that, that's on that professional if the client chooses to hire one of the professionals from their state that they were matched with. But the information is the same. So we were very cognizant of making this useful <laughs> for everybody across the United States by providing information. Um, and then in our resource library on the Diversify platform, we are continuing to build our state by state specific resources. So then those get into those nuances um, and other information that's particular to that state. Uh, but that really falls on the professional from that state to be able to provide that advice to that client. After the, the client uh, goes through the, um, the uh, dashboard and you said it gives them a recommendation, mm -hmm. what specifically recommendations are they getting? Are they, is it essentially saying mediation versus litigation or is it saying you might not be ready for this, but here's some education in case you are? Yeah, so it's really um, it's really both because we also ask a question in there um, about whether somebody is sure about getting divorced. Um, there is this assumption that people make that when somebody uh, is coming in for a consultation or meets with a professional, that they for sure know they want to get divorced. Many people still are unsure. And we have several professionals in discernment counseling to help people uh, figure that out before they start anything. But if somebody falls into that bucket, we address that and we match them then to those professionals. However, most people are falling into the bucket of, they just don't know what process is right for them. So the roadmap will make a recommendation, mediation versus litigation, litigation versus collaborative, et cetera. And sometimes 
And depending on the situation, the recommendation can be two. And in terms of, you know, it looks like they come to an agreement on many things that can be memorialized in, in an agreement. However, there are several issues that are still uh, contested between the parties. And if that's the case, then perhaps on those issues, there's a limited uh, litigation and representation that they may need. So the, the technology at this point, and right, the goal is for us as we continue to grow, to be able to even make the, the technology be more specific. But for right now, it's just giving people the information that they need and the issue spotting that they are not able to do themselves so they can pick the right process from the beginning. And if it's not, if they're not ready, that's okay too. We help them with that as well. Well, it sounds like uh, this is what you're doing is using artificial intelligence as far as to help recreate scenarios to give the best recommendations you can for your clients. Right, we are. Um, the, uh, we built a machine learning algorithm. It is called a neural net, which means that um, for, because I did not know any of this prior to starting this. So <laughs> what it means is that it is like a brain. So the more data that, the, that our technology collects, the, the smarter it gets. So that's what's fascinating too about our platform, sort of the, the statistic geek in me is that there is not a lot of statistics being collected about divorce and what the divorce consumer is looking for and, and how they're shopping. And we're doing that on the platform on the back end. So that's exactly what we've done. We're using technology to really um, engage clients and do a lot of the, the work that a professional would do in a consultation. That way that first meeting can sort of take off. It's a, we've already done the back end work for them and people are engaging the right professionals because they've picked the right process for them. I want to go back to the recommendation piece and let's say I'm sitting there in front of my computer and the uh, system recommends uh, X, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Is there an option for me to reach out to one of the professionals it recommends? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Always. Um, so, and the way that that happens is twofold. Number one, there is an option on every professional in our network. There is an option for them to be messaged. Um, and then they have the contact information right there. They can go right off the platform and contact the professional. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, we are not trying, um, the one thing we don't want we want to make the process and the ability to contact these professionals easy for the client because I very much, we understand that being ready to get divorced is hard enough. And then actually taking that first step and reaching out to somebody regarding your divorce is even harder. And we're not trying to put that behind paid walls or, or any, any loophole for that person. We want them to be able to engage these professionals and reach out to them because our belief is they reach out to these professionals in our network. They're going to get the right information to be able to make the best decision for them and their families. Can you talk about the vetting process for your professionals? Sure. So um, a lot of it, which is very interesting, uh, is what we do is I have a, at least a 30 minute conversation with each and every professional. They first, excuse me, they first fill out an application um, with their license information, with everything. We do a search on that to make sure that there haven't been any um, issues, violations, that their licenses are up to date, et cetera. Uh, and then they have at least a 30 minute conversation with me. Um, and in that conversation, I am really, 
there's certain things that I'm, I'm looking for and certain alerts that, that I'm looking for that I alluded to earlier in our conversation. And from there, they become a part of our network. Um, and we have turned people away. We have turned professionals away who either were not, uh, did not have the same mission in mind or they approach divorce in a way that is not compatible with the mission of Divorceify. And that's okay. We still wish them well, but um, <laughs> we are, you know, there's some, there's something for everyone and not every, and, and not, and something is not going to be for everyone. And we understand that and that's all right. Um, so that's how we do it. Uh, many, because of our community being as strong as it is, many of our referrals are also internal from our own professionals who have colleagues who are like, these are, these are the people that I enjoy working with, that I have a lot of respect for. So that is a wonderful thing. Um, but it's a small world and we all have certain reputations and the divorce world is small. And you, you sort of filter out those people, but really we have, we have not had, knock on wood, we have not had any problems with any of our professionals or any complaints from clients. Let's go, I think I interrupted you a while back and then, so you had uh, three points of the pain point of creating Divorceify. So number one was you had clients come to you that wanted you to be all and, and do all and, you know, even become their dog walker. Right. Uh, <laughs> number two, I believe was like medi uh, mediation versus litigation. I think, and that's where I interrupted you. Uh, the third pain point. Um, was just the, um, the lack of, so divorce is a very disempowering process and they just felt there was no way uh, to get prepared. And then having to scramble to collect important documents or figure out, uh, you know, where they have joint accounts or where they don't. So that was the third pain point. So what we do and what the divorce GPS does is that it provides them with their roadmap at the end, it provides them with a list of important documents to start to collect. Um, to start to get their hands on so that it's uh, not a last minute scramble and so that they're not going and meeting with their professional for the first time and hearing about, you know, do you have the deed to the house? And they're kind of standing there like a deer in headlights, like, wait, what? Yes. How do, I have no idea where that is. Yes. And it's funny you say that because literally when you're speaking to an attorney, time is money. And I remember... Mm -hmm. The very first time I was sitting, uh, talking to my attorney, and I, I <laughs> this is why I've said to a lot of guests, where were you when I was going through my divorce, Sonia? Amen. Because he was asking me, and, and God bless him, he was asking me, you know, questions just like that, and I'm just like, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't yeah. know, I don't know, and. I felt so unprepared for that first meeting and that was, Oh gosh, hundreds of dollars later. And I'm going, all right. I just, that, that was a waste of his time was a waste of my time. And now exactly. I just wasted all this money because like you said, I was so unprepared for class. I don't even think, I don't even think I had a number two pencil. That's how unprepared right. for class I was. I know. And it's an awful feeling, Tommy. And it is. It's exactly what you said. It's expensive. It's a waste of everybody's time. And it really just starts to make you feel like, uh-oh, this is going to be a nightmare. And if we, and that is part of it, that's part of what I do with my, with uh, clients who utilize me as their concierge, part of what I do is help you prepare those documents. I can talk to clients about the documents they need and why it's important for them to have so they realize this is just going to help you in that first meeting. You're going to be prepared. The, your time is not going to be wasted, which means neither is your money. That's the goal. I had clients when I was litigating that liquidated assets 
to just keep fighting a divorce. And that doesn't need to happen. It is very, you know, they, the, one of the big things and sort of when you're a litigator that they tell you is, even though on TV, everything goes to trial, everything's a courtroom drama, that actually <laughs> is rare. <laughs> that most cases settle, if they haven't been able to, they will settle on the steps of that first trial day. And it's true. And so if you can just be more prepared when meeting with your professionals, it, it really is also for, for that client, it just makes them feel like, oh, they can take a deep breath. All right, I got through this first. I was prepared. I was ready. I had some questions ready to ask the professional as opposed to just feeling bombarded with, all of this information that is so confusing, it's so overwhelming, and where do they start? It just feels like a tornado. So we're really trying to take that element away. So uh, over the weekend, I was writing down just some questions and some thoughts about uh, our conversation today. And I thought of, if it's okay with you, Sonia, I. Yeah. I've come up with some other professionals that need to be part of Divorceify. You ready? Ready. Okay. I know we kid about this, but dog walkers. <laughs> Are you signing up? Are you doing this for me? Oh, I would love to. I would love to do that. <laughs> uh, another one, travel agents. Mm-hmm. Uh, chefs. Mm-hmm. Hand handy persons. Absolutely. Auto mechanics, mm -hmm. house, house cleaners. I love it. I was just like, you know, this, this, this could be, you know, a lifestyle company. That's what we're going for. This makes sense. Exactly. To me. I love it. Exactly. Big vision. Big vision. Oh, there you go. Big vision. Right. I need to write that down. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Big vision. You know, it's um, when we were, uh, Diversify was featured in the New York Times a few years ago. And in that article, there was a concierge in New York City, she was based out of New York City, who actually took care of a lot of these things for her clients, high-end clients. And they literally would come to her and say, I cannot handle doing this, this, and that because I'm overwhelmed, because whatever the reason was, and she would take care of a lot of, of those things. And I think that that, you know, we may, people may hear this and, and laugh about it, but really it's, and you know this, because you've been through it, divorce, the process of going through a divorce is, you get hit with these waves some days where you can't even think of getting out of bed, literally, and your body can't do it. And then there are other moments that are not so bad. And you're kind of like, all right, well, I'm getting divorced. Like, okay, I'm able to do this for five minutes. But it is so overwhelming. And there's so much unpredictability. And there's so much feelings and waves of feelings that can just paralyze you at times that, you know what? Dog walker, I could do that. I love animals. I could yeah. actually do that on the platform. <laughs> I, might, I might apply myself today. There you go. Uh, yeah, now, that's it. Just and then when you're going through the vetting process, I'm gonna have tough questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can just picture yourself like sitting from the mirror asking yourself these questions. You're, you know what? You're actually very right. <laughs> it is. It is not far fetched at all. Uh, well, whatever you do in your own time, there, Sonia, is is okay with me. <laughs> right. We'll keep we'll keep that uh, we'll keep that private with well, with yeah. the one year old. My my alone time is minimal. There you go. Well, yeah, been there, done that. Uh, got right? the t-shirt. Got now I did. I get the t-shirt. It was spit on by my son. So there you go. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. And I had a question. Lost the question. Um, oh, I know something that popped on when looking at the Divorceify website. And something that, again, with with the way the world has changed in the world of divorce, as far as um, 
like your business and all the different uh, co-parenting apps that are out there, mm -hmm. one of the things I really stood out for me was the, um, oh, let me pull up the site, is, is the, uh, the comment that one gentleman had on the website, I think it was Michael, and the testimony was about going through 10 pages of documentation. Yeah. And I, I'm laughing about that because I remember that. I remember getting all that paperwork and going, I have no freaking clue. What, what, what am I doing? Yeah. And so again, Sonia, I, I think what you're doing with Divorceify and again, what a lot of entrepreneurs are doing with the co-parenting space, it, 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 it taking a bit of the human element out of it, but that's a good thing because you want the emotions out. You want to make it, you know, as easy as possible on the family, especially like you've already mentioned, you know, let's, let's make this, what's best, what's the best interest in a situation where there are kids involved. And again, taking the emotions out, let's make this, you know, happen. Let's make this work again. What's best for the family. Yeah, exactly. It is. And that's that testimonial. It is so powerful, right? And it's so relatable, but it is, there is a part of this where it is a business transaction and we can we don't need to as professionals we don't need to ignore the emotional aspect that's one thing diversify we believe in we want to help you deal with the emotional aspect and we want to prepare you and streamline the business aspect of divorce and we have found a way to be able to combine those two goals into this platform and it, it's it, it's important because divorce is all of those things. Um, but it's also, as a process, it's very archaic and, and very paper heavy. And it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. And we can make it more efficient and streamlined um, and also address the emotional piece because that will be a part of every divorce in some way. So hopefully uh, as we continue to grow we can just keep helping more and more people um and really give them the type of customized service that i had to give myself when i went through my own divorce and it's important and it's what you need to get to a healthier and better chapter two before I ask you the last question, I think I know where you're, you might go. I'm just guessing with the last question. How can people get a hold of you and Divorceify, Sonia? Sure. So you can get a hold of me at um, Sonia, S O N I A, at Divorceify, D I V O R C E I F Y dot com. Um, you can also go to our website, www.divorceify.com. Um, and you can, if you're on any social media pl platforms, you can find us on there, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and I can be, you can send me a message, anything, or to the general mailbox. We respond to every message, every inquiry, every email. Beautiful. All right, Sonia, last question. What has changed in your life the past 12 months? Okay, well, I, number one, I got remarried. Number two, so for everybody out there, there is not only hope, but it can be better than you ever imagined. I and I had a baby and I never thought that I sort of would, but I have, and he's going to be one next weekend and... Mama's feeling a lot of feels right now, um, but there's just been so much, so much, I, so much happiness and just such a healthy partnership. And I am so grateful for my husband and my son. It's just, 
they're my family. And it's, I never, ever thought, and I just, I can't believe it. But I got through it. I healed and I built something with someone that I never imagined I would, I would do again. And I did. And I'm just so grateful. So those are the, my big changes in the last 12 months. Wonderful. Sonia, thank you so much for your time. I'm so <laughs> happy that technology actually worked in our favor today. I know. Me too. Tommy's so grateful to be on here. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. Wait, before you go, please, one more time, give a shout out to our sponsor. This episode was brought to you by Pod Hero. The easiest way to support your favorite podcast. Did you know that only 1% of the biggest podcasts make money? I- I'm not even in the 215. I-, I don't even like milk. That's a little milk joke. But it's true. The other 99% rely on support from listeners like you with Pod Hero. You can support all of your favorite podcasts, and hopefully I am one of them, at a low monthly fee of only $4.99 a month membership. Just click on the link in the show notes for this episode. Tell Pod Hero your favorite podcast. Again, blending the family. That's what you just listened to. Please, please make sure I'm your favorite. Okay, your contribution gets shared between shows at the end of the month. Pod Hero works with almost all podcasts. There's a 0% platform fee. They don't take a cut. There are no contracts. And you not only get a 30-day free trial, you get my undying, devoted love for the rest of your life. Pod Hero, thanks for listening.